Hello everyone, I'm Guy Blue Summers and I'm back with another Monday movie. So this time I'd like to talk a little bit about instances and how you can use them uh, in ring arrays and really almost any kind of array uh, to help you determine how the array instances are going to interact with each other. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but it, it really is a great way to start looking at how you can use instancing in 3D Studio Max a little bit more robustly. So I have created here a typical engine type object that's just ready for, for an array type instance. Um, you know, you've got the, the outer shell kind of thing. Um, and then on the inside, we're going to put some mechanisms into each one of these little uh, niches. And then, uh, you know, of course, you've got this propulsion type object here in the center. Like, um, you know, it emits a jet of superheated plasma. I don't even know, but it, it looks cool and it looks right, so um, we'll, we'll roll with it. Um, so for starters, you'll want to locate an orthogonal uh, niche that you can work with so that you can feel comfortable, um, you know, working with it in real world space and then letting the instances take care of those, you know, 22.5 degree turns so you don't have to do each one. So I've selected my object, I can tell based on the, on the, giz the transform here this gizmo that this compartment right here is the orthogonal right here so that's the one I'm gonna work from I should probably collapse that down okay here we go uh, let's see so what do I want well um, it, it seems like some kind of piping would be right um, maybe um, yeah some kind of like chemical movement type device so let's get started on that. How about we start with a cylinder? Cylinder's always a good way to start. And I'm going to use my align tool, this one right here, and I'm just going to make sure that they're they're properly in line with each other, just like that. Yeah, there we go. Position it, make sure that it's in the middle of the niche. Now this part doesn't have to be super duper perfect, because um, you know it's it's going to be one of many, and so the alignment is is probably not going to catch the eye of uh, the average viewer. It just has to look cool. Okay, so I like the way that looks. I'm going to convert this to an editable poly, and I'm going to do my instancing first. A lot of people do the instancing at the end, but what I want to show you is the power that you can get when you do it right at the beginning. So. Let's uh, let's orient this guy here. Okay. Why don't we align it to the world and then do that? There we go. Looks like it's in the center. And I know from before that I've actually made nine copies. Nine copies of this object. Um. Stand by. So it looks like my alignment's a little bit off still. And that's because the align tool is not perfect. You have to center to the object and then run the align. And that should have fixed it. There we go. So you can see from these far off instances that they're now prop they're not properly aligned. Alright, good stuff. So now let's see what we can do with this. Why don't we have two of these? So now they're, ooh, better yet. What if we could mirror it instead of instead of doing that? So let's, let's try that, let's see how that's gonna work. So I've got my symmetry modifier, which I have uh, on a hotkey. Okay, that's close. Let's move this up a little bit. So I can, I'm watching right here where I can see my, uh, my other piece of, of, uh, of this object. Why don't I make this guy just a little bit smaller so they can both fit? There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I can see by the bounding box that it's not quite lining up with the back of the niche. So maybe I can... Maybe I can take this guy here and, and just uh, move him down a little bit. There 
and I'm not going to move the whole instance. Look at how I'm looking at the the element item, or the element sub-object selection rather than the, the whole object. Because now I don't have to move all of them, all of these instances, I can just move the sub-objects. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Let's dive into it. I'm going to start building up just a little bit of detail here. Hey. Uh, my hotkeys have entirely stopped working, it seems. Very well. That's okay, we can still... I think I can still function. Alright. That looks close to what I want. And so all my changes are being cascaded around to these other instances. I can watch them, I can render them at any time, uh, and feel comfortable with, with the outcome, knowing that I'm moving toward what I really want. So let's create a, a little like node type thing here. Kind of like that. Okay. What else can we do with this? How about how about one more inset and a negative extrusion, and then I'll try putting some piping around it. There. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's try one more thing. So this is where we can be really ambitious with this technique. Is when you can have one instance interacting with the next and you can see the effect as you're doing it so let's pick our orthogonal and I'm gonna create a simple box a rectangle spline that kinda of goes between the two and rotate it just a just a bit and I can tell because now this line has become uh, it properly spans between the two of these you know Okay, and let's position them such that such that this pipe spans between two nodes. That's going to be pretty ambitious. Change these to corners so that they don't start freaking out on me. All right, I want one here. One right about here. Sorry, I was working in another viewport, which is really horrible of me, because um, then you can't see what I'm doing. But one here, right about there, and then we also want one here and one here. Actually, let's move this down. So I want the the top right connected to the lower left, just like that there. Okay, and this guy gets moved up. And now I'm just going to tweak these a little bit so that they can actually look like this is where they belong. Not a whole bunch of intersecting polygons, you know what I mean. Let's just kind of maneuver this. Still a little on the thick side. Turn that down a bit. Okay, and now this side. And this is just a rough approximation. I'm not gonna, um, I would normally obsess over this a lot more, which I'm not going to do, uh, especially because I have limited time. This is supposed to end up on YouTube, not like my last video. I'm gonna force myself to stop, which is not easy. And then I'm going to um, chamfer these two, or fillet them. It's fillet when you're in splines, just like that, just like that. And then I'm going to attach it to one instance. And what does that do? It makes every instance have it. All right, looks like we're all set.
I'm going to take a clay render for you and speed that up so you can see what this looks like when it's been rendered. Thanks so much for viewing, and I hope you'll join me next week for another Monday movie. Till then, happy modeling.